Is it time to cut off the U.N.? Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, urging the U.S. to stop fighting the U.N. after its anti-Israel vote. Is that something President-elect Donald Trump would do? Well, take a look at this. He just tweeted, and I quote, The United Nations has great potential, but right now it is just a club for people to get together, talk, and have a good time. So sad. Reaction right now from U.N. watcher Claudia Rosset. She's with the Independent Women's Forum. Good to see you, Claudia. All right, is there something to what he's saying here? In other words, the U.N. Uh, has kind of lost its way, and it's more a social club than actually an organization that's contributing meaningful to the world in any way. Actually, Trish, it's even worse than that. It's not that the U.N. has lost its way. It's that the way it's configured, the whole way it's set up, is actually always going to produce the kind of horrible thing that we just witnessed. You know, President Obama took advantage of the U.N., to do an end run around Congress, the American people, after the election, just before leaving office. But the UN has for decades been a problem, a welter, a sort of well, not just of anti Semitism, but basically hostile to democracy. And it's not only a place where billions in your tax dollars go every year for people to have a good time, it's a place where billions in your tax dollars go to fund people who are actively doing damage not only to Israel but to the interests of the United States. You say it's the way it's set up. What do you mean by that? Why is it sort of intrinsically yeah. flawed in your view? It's an enormous collective of governments. It sounds like it's democratic. You know, they have votes. They have a general assembly. It is not actually a representative of the will of the people. The majority of the countries there are not free countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, uh, and the greatest incentive at the UN is for the worst states to actually exploit it. That's why you see Cuba on virtually every program. Um, mm -hmm. That's why you see the second largest voting bloc in the General Assembly headed for most of the past six years by Iran. Uh, and that's why you see this really incredibly bigoted, uh, destructive, ruinous vote at the Security Council mm -hmm. where the U.S. usually runs interference for this stuff, but did yeah. not but, well, under President you know, Obama. President Obama ha yeah. has made it clear that you know our longtime friend, our longtime ally, uh, in his view, is not the friend that it once was, and, and hopefully that changes with President-elect Donald Trump there uh, for for the safety and security of Israel and and for uh, for us as well. But how do we do that? I mean, in other words, we just cut off their funding. Yeah. We're giving them eight billion dollars a year. Do we say, uh, uh you know, no more where that came from, Claudia? Yeah, we're probably actually giving them even more than that because it's five years since the Obama administration actually gave us the full figures for that. But um, there are two things we can do, two things the next administration can do. One is, yes, to cut their funding and cut big. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt the United States. It's going to help. The mm -hmm. second thing is start looking at ways to work around the U.N. The problem is this is a collectivist monopoly. It's like having Animal Farm, okay, in Midtown Manhattan trying to run the world. We need to have ways around it. Competition is the essence of what makes markets work and the dem democratic politics work. So a and competing the UN, factor to the UN. Yes, yes. I like it. Start looking for other institutions, things like NATO, but more. Things for the 21st century. The UN is out of date and it is a truly pernicious influence on world politics. Claudia, good to have you here. Thank you so much.